Hey guys, Amanda here. Thanks for visiting my YouTube channel. Today I thought we could color Peter Pixie using alcohol markers and colored pencils. You can use whatever alcohol marker or color pencil you'd like to use. You just want to match your colors up as best as possible. Uh, right now I am using E000 from the Copic marker line and I'm just coloring in um, a base flat color for all of his skin areas. E00 is sort of like a pale peachy color. It's um, It doesn't have a whole lot of color to it. It's, it looks a little bit darker maybe in the video, but you really once it dries you really don't see it very much. But like I said, you can use any marker that you uh, would like to. I'm going to be using Copics for this video. So the next color we're using is E04 and this is sort of a uh, reddish darker peach brown color <laughs> and it's just going into the darker shadows of his skin basically under his sleeves, under his hair, uh, on his ears behind his face under his pants. We're going to do a little bit of defining of his toe area with this color. Um, if you're not using Copic markers, you would pull out four um, flesh tones and whatever flesh color you like and you want to kind of put them somewhat close to each other in level, which is lightness and darkness. So you want a dark wind, a medium dark, a light, any very light and you can follow along no problem. So now we're taking the second darkest skin tone which would be E13 if you're using Copics and we're just going to blend out the um, edge of where we laid the E04 the darkest color in and then add a little bit more shadowing to give his skin some depth and shape. Uh, that's what we use shadows for is to create um, in this case what we're using the shadow colors for is to give the skin some shape it's not just a flat line now it kind of you can see you know you want to create a curve in the foot some curves on his cheeks where his cheeks come in and that's what we're doing I'm going to add a little extra around his eyes to really make his cheeks more pronounced and next we're going to use the second to lightest flesh tone or, or uh, white people flesh tone I should say and go in and blend out the last color we used and add even more depth. As you can see I'm kind of pulling this over the eyes. We're filling in the neck area since he doesn't have a big um, chest, a lot of chest exposed and this color is E11 if you're using Copics. We're just gonna. Oh, I pulled out R02. I forgot to put it on the video, but I just added a little bit of blush to his cheeks just now. And now we're back to E000, and we're just gonna blend this all together, but don't blend too much. You don't wanna lose um, the depth, but just blend it all a little bit. You can also just go in and blend the last, blend the edges of the last color if you're more comfortable with that. Now we're going to start on his hair and we're using the darkest of our brown shades for brown hair. So if you have a favorite brown hair color palette with your marker brand, just use the darkest uh, color of that. And we're just going to um, do the darkness in his part. We're going to do under where his hair slides over and near his ears. Now we're going to use the second darkest, and for me that is E27 in Copics. I did E29 for the darkest, E27 for the second darkest. Now we're going to go to E25, and that is the last of the browns we're going to use in his hair. Because we want to leave some shine in his hair, and that is the part that we will just leave white. So we've used three colors for his hair. Now we're gonna pull out a dark green. For me, that is G19. And we're gonna start adding 
the shadows in his clothing. So we're doing where his legs sort of go over the shirt. We're gonna do the sides of the shirt so we can create sort of a round belly. Down along his shoulders because obviously his head's gonna put some shadow there. And just a little bit to kind of define the legs of his pants. And next we will use uh, G05 and we're going to go in and blend those edges out, add a little more shadow. And we're going to use this G5 to create creases in his shirt and his pants. And finally, we'll use YG13 and fill all of this in, except for the little patch on his knee. Now you can do whatever you want with the patch, but you'll see what I do with it later. Next, we're gonna start on the uh, ground beneath the grass, and that is E59, the darkest um, a very dark brown, the darkest of the browns we'll be using in this area. And we're just going to go in and define all the ridges. This is almost kind of like, um, you can almost kind of think of this as wood, even though it's more like, um, a piece of it's more like dirt that's been separated from the rest of the land he's sort of floating on a little island of his own he's a he's a daydreamer our peter picks he is and we're kind of shading this um if you think about how you shade hair this is kind of what we're doing down here just to create that uh striation through the ground here And yes, this is one of the more time consuming parts, but it's also super relaxing to me. I love doing this um, flicking method. It's just letting the marker jump off the paper slightly at the end. It's, it's a little bit cathartic, which is, I guess, weird, but it just is for me. When I find my mojo when I'm coloring hair, uh, sometimes hair, hair can be super complicated, but when I find my mojo and it's just going, it's very soothing. So now we're using the second darkest color uh, for me with Copics, that's E57, and we're just going to come in and flick over where we just laid in color and pull it a little further down so you can see this beautiful mid-tone um, warm very warm brown color and finally we're going to color the rest of this area in with E55 which is our lightest brown yep that's super pretty now we're back to G19 we're going to do the grass under the mushroom and grass can be kind of complicated if you think about it too much which some of us do so what, you, what I'm starting here with is just doing areas that would kind of be in behind things, right? And then after I get that done, I'm going to go in and just add um, some flicking, sort of like uh, fur or hair. You know, grass isn't necessarily going to be uh, always standing straight up, or that's not... You know, I'm more interested in creating an illusion, a texture. So that's what I am doing um, here. I'm just kind of sort of going in and you can see where I'm flicking and adding some little tiny spikes and just, you know, create what we're what you're doing when you make um, art, unless it's photorealistic art, which is not my 
GM. I don't buy photorealistic art or I don't make photorealistic art. Um, but what you're doing is you're just create. you're making, you're giving the per your viewer's mind or imagination an opportunity to fill in some blanks. <laughs> and that is a, a big part of texture. So here we are going in with the G05 and we're just going to fill in a lot of these areas but leave some uh, for highlights. So we're going to maybe on the edge there as, you're, as it's coming off the island uh, leave white so that we can come in with the lightest green which for me with Copics is YG13 and fill in those areas we left white. And now we have some really cool textured grass. It feels wild. It feels like it's out in, you know, the middle of a magical land, which was uh, the goal I was going for. All right, now we're going to start on the mushroom cap. And we're going to begin with the darkest red. For me, I'm using Red Violet RV29. And we're going to fill in all of the shadow areas. We're going uh, between his legs. We're going to sort of trace the outline of his hands and his feet and his uh, legs. We're going to create some shadow coming off of him where he's sitting on the mushroom. That's basically what we're doing here. And as you can see, I like to do, um, I like to use flicking in a lot of my coloring. It just, uh, I feel like it makes it easier to blend later. You know, when you come in with the next color, it just seems to blend together better if you've got that sort of feathered edge. That's my opinion. Um, I mean, everyone can, you know, mess around, see what they like the best. Uh, I think at one point I probably did uh, circles and that works really well too but um, for big spaces like this I like to just do the flicking and sort of bring it blend it in with that now I decided to keep the little mushrooms the same color as the big mushroom but something you could do is, is go in with some other colors and make it like a rainbow mushroom and that would be fun too and the little mushrooms are easy. We're just going to do uh, along the perimeter, the inner perimeter there of the little mushroom caps. And next we're going to pull out our second darkest RV, or red if you're doing regular red. And that is RV25 if you're using Copics. And we're just going to basically go over the edge of what we just laid down with the RV29. Now the reason I chose, um, well the reason I chose green clothes for him is because I knew I wanted to do these uh, mushrooms red and I wasn't sure about his clothes so I thought well I'll, I'll choose a complementary color and when the, um, if you ever look at a color chart the opposite of a red violet would be a yellow green and so I kind of went with a warmer green um, to complement the red violet and what complementary colors do is they make each other pop when they're side by side now if you mix them together you get neutrals like brown and gray and, or what some people might call muddy colors which is what happens if you get crazy with it if you start adding too much of other stuff so now we're going to pull out the lightest red, and for me that is RV13 with Copic markers. And we're just going to color in all of the areas we still have white. And now you can see we get a nice beautiful blend. Next, we're going to take E55, which is a mid-level brown. It's not a dark brown. It's a 
lighter brown, but it's on the dark end of light browns. And that's what we're going to use to color in our mushroom stem. And uh, I'm not sure what that's called underneath the mushroom, actually. <laughs> I know I looked it up at some point, now I can't remember. But we're going to color everything else on the mushroom with a light brown tone. So it's uh, almost a skin color, sort of like a flesh color. So we're taking the E55, which is our mid-tone brown, but the darkest of the browns we'll be using on this. And we're just going to go in all the under areas. All of the areas that are under something else. And also um, pull up from behind the grass. Now we're going to take E53, which is our second to darkest color we'll be using on this mushroom. A darker light brown and just flick over what we just did and add a little bit at the bottom of those fin type things coming off the mushroom and then we're going to take E51 which is our lightest beige color and fill in the rest of this mushroom stem there we go now we're going to take B00, which is a pale sky bluish type color, and we're just going to go in and do sort of along the perimeter of the bubbles and the wings to kind of reflect the color of what would be the sky behind him in these more translucent or uh, transparent areas. Then we're taking RV21. And we're going to pop a little bit of that sort of in a, the bottom area of the bubbles. And we're going to do some in his patch. Now we're going to take YG21. And these are just the lightest colors. It was the lightest red, red violet we used and the lightest green we used. And we're going to go in and we're going to color in his wings. We're going to leave some white area, but we're going to color in the bottom of the wings. And we're going to add just a little bit to the bubbles. Remember, the colors we use in the bubbles are reflective of the rest of the image. So we use some blue for what would be the sky in the background, some pink from the mushroom head, some green from his clothes. You could even add a little bit of light brown if you want to, but I don't go that far. So now we're going to take the E55 and the E53, and we're just going to add a little color to the rocks. Now I'm taking the R02 and just coloring in his lips. We're going to take the BG000, which is the very a very, very pale blue-green, and color in the whole bubble, all of the bubbles and the wings. Now we're going to take G05, which is our middle green. And we're going to color in his little bubble blower, his little bubble wand. And take YG13. We only did the left half. The, ha the part of the wand that goes into the bubble, we're going to color a lighter green. With the lightest green we have. Now we're going to get into the colored pencils. And this is where I like to do all of my detail work. Uh, I'm going to take Polychromos Faber-Castell, Polychromos. 177 which is a dark brown you can use whatever dark brown color pencil you have it it's not um it doesn't have to be polychromos doesn't have to be prismacolor it can be whatever you have as long as it lays the color down well and we're just going to go through um and redefine the outline of his hair now i'm also going to use it to fill in his eyebrows and his pupils and eyelashes then we'll go down and we'll again do the outline of the uh, base of his little island and then fill in any lines that seem important to you and that would just be the um, where the land comes in and out where it sort of waves so next we're going to use Polychromos 187, which is sort of a uh, 
golden color I believe it's like burnt okra maybe and outline his skin again sorry if you hear the trash truck it's it's garbage day and it's hot and we don't have central air and I really don't like air conditioning so I just leave the windows open but it's nice and cool right now and I love it it's a good time to be <laughs> recording other than that and just make sure you get all of those lines and you might want to go over his nose a little bit I decide to go in and define his mouth and eyes a little more with this color as well we're going to use the same uh, 187 to outline the mushrooms and that's something that I try to do when I'm uh, coloring with Copics or colored pencils is I try to use a lot of this I try not to get too crazy with too many colors uh, you with color pencil and marker you can create new colors by blending uh, colors you already have together it's just like paint in that way so we're going to do the outline of this mushroom area and make sure we pick some of the lines inside the mushroom to define as well since they got kind of lost in the coloring when you're doing the detail work with pencils it's a good time to go in and maybe fix any mistakes you may have encountered while you were coloring with your markers they're great for that so now we're going to take a dark colored a dark green colored pencil for me that's uh, polychromos 264 and we're just going to outline all of the green areas pretty much we're just giving them a little more definition now while you're doing this make sure you're keeping your pencil sharp it's super important when you're doing the detail work to keep your pencil as sharp as possible um, I realized later on that his facial fe I could not get the pencil sharp enough for his face facial features with my uh, sausage fingers <laughs> so I pulled out my Prismacolor very thins and I used that the brown from that to do his eyes um, his eyes are probably fine the way they are right now but I wanted them I wanted a little more definition so that's what I did <clears throat> very thins are just uh, basic very basically what they say they're very thin colored pencils and you can get a very very sharp point on them so next we're gonna take um, a sky blue a light sky blue color for me it's polychromos 156 and we're gonna outline those bubbles and the wings just giving everything more definition now we're going to pull out a dark red or a dark red violet for this I think I actually just use dark red I uh, outlined his patch and put a little some little stripes in it and then I'm using it to go over all the red outlines and this is polychromos uh, 225 and I do believe it's called dark red So here's where I pull out the Prismacolor very thin. Well, I start. I tried to do it with the um, Polychromos 177, and then I thought, you know, I should probably get the very thin, and that's what I did. This is Prismacolor very thin 746, and we're doing his eyelashes. We're giving his eyes a little more definition. And that's pretty much all I do with that very thin um, it might be nitpicking on my part you probably don't have to worry about that but <laughs> and finally we're gonna add some highlights with the 
white gel pen. I am using the Sakura Jelly Roll white gel pen. I've also used Uniball and that's a good gel pen. Um, it seems like the Sakura Jelly Roll white gel pen is easier for me to get and the white is a little more uh, pure white in my opinion. The Uniball is sort of a, a little bit off white. I mean it works all the same but I like the Sakura Jelly Roll myself. And that's it. That is the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you had a good time. Uh, please check out the whimsicalartwitch.com. Bye-bye.